if I can say yes, then I have won regardless of what I've done. The fitness lifestyle, the bodybuilding lifestyle, whatever you want to call it to me, it's become easier because it's not a chore. It's not something I have to do. It's not something I wake up and I think about doing it. It just happens because of the years of repetition, of waking up and doing the things that make me feel good. And it's totally worth it. Like it's not even a question because the reward is there. Build dedication, build direction. Build your body, build your life. Bodybuilding.com It felt like I was drowning, and I just, I couldn't keep my head above water. Fitness is actually what saved my life. Several years ago, I found myself very involved and obsessed with the way that I looked and every aspect of my life, the way that I ate, the way that I drank, what I did in my daily life. So I made the decision to enter treatment for eating disorders. While I was in treatment, not only learning aspects of nutrition that I didn't know, I also found the sport of powerlifting. That shift in my brain was a weight lifted from my shoulders. I wasn't constantly concerned about every microgram of food that was going in my mouth. I was just wanting to be better and stronger and healthier. I build my body to be as strong, healthy, and happy as I possibly can be. I am definitely the happiest and healthiest I've ever been. I feel empowered, I feel capable, and I feel strong. The mindset that I have right now um, is gonna continue forever. I know now what makes me happy and what makes me healthy both physically and mentally, and I plan to continue that for the rest of my life. Build balance, build fulfillment. Build your body, build your life. Bodybuilding.com. The main reason I build my body is to stay healthy. You have one life to live. I feel like fitness is just part of who I am. It's my anchor in life. It's what keeps me grounded. It helps me to stay disciplined. It helps me to stay driven. I also build my body for my people back home, my Samoan people, my Polynesians, the indigenous people. There's a lot of people dying young. There's a lot of people that don't know how to do fitness. You know. What's up guys, Trainer Mike here at thebodybuilding.com corporate headquarters here today to take you guys through a back and chest workout. So for me personally, I know I've mentioned it a few times before, but um, I am one week out from a competition today. So despite the fact that energy is here, we're gonna crank it up to here for you guys and give you guys a great workout. So this is kind of how I would do typically my uh, uh, start my depletion workouts being a week out from a show. But, but even if you don't compete, this is a great workout to do that incorporates your, your main movers for chest and back. And uh, honestly, like a really good workout for a beginner intermediate. So if you fall into that category and you're looking for a good upper body workout to do, this is definitely the one for you. And uh, we just got loaded up here. So um, took our Dimatize Pre-Wo today. We went with the Pineapple Orange Crush. Awesome new flavor. So what I like to do is I like to typically take this pre-workout about 20 to 30 minutes prior to my workout. Um, caffeine's effects peak at about 60 minutes after you take it. So take your Dimatize Pre-Wo about 30 minutes before your workout and that way about halfway through your workout, 
you're going to be totally peaked on the intensity that you're going to get from that, not only from the caffeine, but from the teacrine as well. So um, if you guys haven't checked out the Diamondized Pre-Well, make sure you do. I think we'll put a link up for you um, and uh, currently running a little bit of a special on there as well. So the nice thing about the, this is it's got teacrine in it. If you guys are not familiar with teacrine, it's, it's a stimulant similar to caffeine, but your body doesn't build a tolerance to it which is pretty awesome, right? So if you've ever just taken a ton of caffeine and after a while you're like, I just wanna fall asleep. Um, teacrine actually has been studied long-term and people don't develop that same kind of tolerance to it. So pretty cool stuff. So we're gonna start today, bench press, four sets of 10 reps. We're gonna keep the jacket on until we get a little warm and we feel like we're adequately swole to take that off, all right? So headband of gains is on, 10 reps, let's roll. So purpose right now in my training is, is obviously not strength. Um, actually feel pretty weak, my calories, my carbohydrates are way lower than they'll be all year long as I go throughout this final phase of getting off the last bit of fat that I can. So weight is not a big focus. Um, we're just trying to keep some intensity in there, make sure that we get good quality reps in and that uh, more so at this point in time, it's about stimulating the muscle rather than trying to annihilate that muscle here as well. So. In my pre-workout, I always look for caffeine um, as a good starter. Caffeine's awesome, it's amazing. Um, I really like looking for a high dose of citrulline as well. Uh, citrulline malate has been studied to be a great vasodilator, so something that's gonna help improve that blood flow. Also, beta alanine, I like to look for about three, 3.2 milligrams of beta alanine. Um, above and beyond that, you know, if you can throw in something like a teacrine or an inositol stabilized arginine, that stuff's always helpful as well. Should bench be full extension or partial? Bench um, should probably be full extension. I'm focusing a little more on partial today, um, just because again, I'm focused more on just stimulating, not annihilating the muscle. Um, this workout today is kind of a depletion workout for me, so a little weak. Um, therefore, you're probably gonna see me cheating a little more. But yeah, I usually go full range of motion, throw in some partials occasionally just for fun though. All right, set two, 10 reps. Gets tough. Gets tough. Um, what is your cardio routine like right now? Uh, and what does it differ from your normal cardio? Yeah, cardio routine right now, because I'm a week out from a show, it's higher than it is all year long. Um, typically, I'll start off my day, uh, wake up, hit a couple scoops of amino acids, um, and then I'll do 20 to 30 minutes of moderate intensity cardio. So heart rate, 60 to 70% of my max. Um, so 20 to 30 minutes, usually an incline walk for me. And then post-workout, another 20 to 30 minutes of stair climber, moderate intensity as well. So 40 to 60 minutes a day. Blah. Never like to get more than an hour of cardio. It uh, starts to kill the gains. Not good, not good. What am I drinking? So, um, Amino Pro is what I'm drinking now. Two scoops, fruit punch, diamondized Amino Pro. So it's gonna give me five grams of branch chains, some added electrolytes. Uh, it's also got taurine in it, which is really nice this close to a show because it helps prevent some of the cramping and stuff that would typically come with that. So two scoops, fruit punch, Amino Pro during workouts. Okay guys. 
third set, 10 reps, let's go. Bring this wall. There it is. And I, I really like, you know, not only do I like the amino acids for the anti-catabolic effect during a workout, but it just helps you drink more water, which is uh, super crucial, especially when like carbs and calories are low. Um, what is your hand placement for bench press? This person notices that sometimes it's close, sometimes it's wide. What do you prefer? Yeah, for my hand placement for bench press, I like going kind of what I would call a medium. Um, you, you should play with it. I mean, sometimes it's good to go a little narrow, sometimes a little wider for your hand plates, but it's gonna hit the chest a little differently as you alter that. But for me, it's pretty uh, medium, I would say. Um, how much weight do you typically try to lose before a show, and how much do you like to gain in your off season? I don't like to have more than about a 20 pound swing from off season to contest, I find that it's um, just not necessary to do any more than that. And it's really, really hard on the body, on the metabolism, if you're trying to lose 30 or 40 pounds every year. Or so about 20 pounds in total. <sighs> Last set, 10 reps, dig deep. One rep short, but I didn't want it to fall on my face today. Not yet. This face, we got to keep this thing intact. So hopefully you guys have a spotter as you're doing this as well. We're having a little bit of a discussion on Facebook about your, the weight that you're lifting. It's hard to tell from the camera angle. So how much are you actually lifting and what is it compared to your one rep now? I mean, I have seven plates on each side. It's not that big of a deal, guys. It's just, you know, me throwing around a little weight. No, I, uh, 225 on here. So I've got 245s on each side and, um, one rep max is 335. Yeah, 335, so. Can soccer or football hurt your strength gains? Can soccer or football hurt your strength gains? Just depends on how much you're doing. Soccer, if you're playing it all the time, um, high cardiovascular workouts, it can definitely hurt your strength gains. But um, as far as, you know, if you're just playing a couple times a week, it's not gonna hurt much. Same thing's true with football. You just have to be careful on how much cardio you're doing. When cardio starts to get really high, it will absolutely hurt your ability to gain strength. There's a question about, are there any supplements that can help with sleep? Sleeping? Oh, yes. Supplements that help with sleep. Huge fan of ZMA and GABA. Um, I would definitely check out both of those. Melatonin also works really well for sleep. So I take ZMA and GABA every night and occasionally I'll do melatonin if I'm having some trouble sleeping as well. Okay, 10 reps T-bar row, four sets of 10 here. So nothing too crazy. So basically opposing movements here. We start with a press. Now we go into a row. Um, good overall upper body workout here, guys. Again, really, really good. Kind of beginner, intermediate type of workout. Um, do you prefer barbell or dumbbell bench presses for an intermediate workout? Do both. Do I prefer Barbell or dumbbell for an intermediate workout for chest press. You got to do both. I don't know that I prefer one over the other. Uh, what kind of wrist bands are you 
Versa grips. We got these on the site as well, guys. So check out these. Um, I love them. Man, I, you know, I ever since I started using wrist wraps, um, I found a lot of benefit to them. But the Versa Versa grips are awesome. So it's a little light. We're gonna up it a little bit. Intensity here, we're trying to go about 80%. Um, not trying to push to failure every single set or anything like that. So whew, here we go. Set two, 10 reps. Let's get her done, baby. Feels good. Focus on these compound movements. Not trying to get too fancy with it. Just keep the stuff that we know works well. What does your typical peak week look like in terms of diet? Typical peak week in terms of diet. So I compete on Friday. Um, yesterday had a little bit of a refeed to kind of prepare for a five day deplete. So I'm gonna go uh, deplete more or less Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, Monday. Probably start bringing my carbs back up on Tuesday and Wednesday and then Thursday uh, we'll bring them up quite a bit and then show on Friday. So my whole philosophy, peak week matters, but if you're not in shape coming into a peak week, you know, there's nothing that you're gonna do that final week that's gonna change that. People more often screw things up during peak week than actually do themselves any good. Favorite diet? Uh, the one that works for you is the diet I recommend. I don't care what that is, guys. There's, you wanna do intermittent fasting or keto or South Beach, if it works for you, do it. If it doesn't, don't force it. Set three. Let's go. <laughs> Feels good, even though energy is a little low. That diametized pre woe definitely gives me a good 45, 60 minutes of just amped up energy that otherwise I would not have. For this particular exercise, what is your cue and which muscles should you really be focusing on in full? My cue here is to keep the back straight. Um, super important that we don't let that lower back round while we're doing this exercise. I like to keep my elbows in as well. I'm trying to target mid back here. So every rep I'm squeezing those shoulder blades together to really try and get the most out of that mid back. Whew. Set four, let's get it done, baby. It's time to grind. You can't complain just cause you're a little low on food. We got work to do. That feels good. Feels good to move a little bit of weight around. And now, guys, we're gonna move on to some Smith machine chest presses and work a little more of the incline uh, or upper part of the chest for this one. Let's get it done. So right now, I know some people were asking questions about what I do for peak week. Right now, the majority Actually, all of my carbohydrates will come pre and post training. So after the workout gets done, I'll show you guys. I'll mix up my shake that I do after a workout and um, show you guys where those carbs come from. So if you're curious what that looks like, stay tuned. Um, you kind of got to go. So how do you know if the weight you're lifting is too light? Um, depends on what your goal is, but for the majority of exercises, 
you kind of have to go off of what I call a rating of perceived exertion. So I want to go with a rating of perceived exertion of about eight to nine, meaning, you know, maybe I have one more rep in me, but I pretty much squeezed out everything that I could. All right, so chest press here. I think we slated for 10 or 15 reps. We're gonna go 15 reps here. Again, reps get a little higher as we get into peak week um, to try and deplete that glycogen out. Uh, we're not gonna go crazy with a whole bunch of drop sets or anything like that, but 15 reps, quality here, focusing on the contraction. And in between sets, take some time, flex it up, squeeze it up, drive that blood flow into the muscles. That was a little light, so we're gonna add a little more weight this time. So Chris wants to know, does coffee work in a similar way as pre-workout? For the sole purpose of energy, yes, but the challenge is, you know, caffeine in and of itself is a vasoconstrictor, meaning it's actually gonna limit the blood flow going into the muscles. So a good pre-workout will have a vasodilator in it as well, so you can actually enhance blood flow, which is advantageous during a workout. Mike, what would you recommend for big shoulder gains? Big shoulder gains. Um, focus mostly Unlike your overhead presses, I like a, just a standing barbell overhead press is my favorite exercise for building shoulders. Okay, it's on, set two, 15 reps. Assuming we can get there. I do like to do partial reps on these Smith machine presses, especially a lot of times if people go full range of motion, the challenge that they have is they rest at the top. It's real common to see somebody do a chest press, get to the top and rest for a half a second or a second. And we're trying to keep constant tension on the muscle as we do this exercise. I'm still working the upper chest if you arch your back. And I'm mostly, you should arch your back on a bench press. Whether it's flat or whether it's inclined, um, you want to expand that rib cage to force your shoulder blades together. That helps to stabilize the scapula, which is a better position for pressing. Leo met me at FIBO, what's up man? Yeah, FIBO was a rush last week. Thanks to everybody that came by. Um, definitely a lot of fun there. Okay, set three, 15 reps. Let's go, gang. One rep short, we're trying our best to push out everything that we have, but you know, sometimes 
you might not get that last rep. And that's okay, as long as you're getting to failure. We set a target up and we try our best to get there. So I'm gonna go down just a little bit and wait for our last set. Not in contest prep, my favorite post-workout meal. Um, I really like peanut butter and honey sandwiches. So I'll do like a scoop and a half of protein with a peanut butter and honey sandwich. Woo! Get in some good protein. Get in those fast acting carbohydrates. Man, that's good. Dang it, why'd you gotta bring up peanut butter and honey? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. But I could go for a peanut butter and honey sandwich right now. Woo. What is your comp? My competition, I'm doing uh, the MPC Emerald Cup. It's in Bellevue, Washington, right next to Seattle. Again, one week from today, Classic Physique Division C. What burger are you going to eat? After? <laughs> Guys, what burger am I going to eat after the competition? There's a place in Seattle called 8 Ounce. A little shout out to 8 Ounce in Seattle and they have the best burger I've ever had in my entire life. And it's called the eight ounce. Try it, seriously. All right, last set. Now I'm hungry. Earn it, baby. Burger tastes a lot better after you win. keep those aminos coming in guys again the diametize amino pro is what i like to drink during my workouts and um, you guys are going to love that stuff i like fruit punch is kind of my preferred flavor but make sure you guys hop on too check out the specials we got going on like if you guys like protein bars i know you know for me it's super convenient we've got buy one get one 50 off going on on the protein bars right now we got the new iso bars the only 100% isolate protein bar. And we've also got our blend, um, the Elite Bar as well, which are unbelievable. The coconut cream flavor, whoo, stupid good. How did you first get involved with Dimatize? Um, I actually first got involved with Dimatize through bodybuilding.com, thank you very much. Um, we did a 12 week transformation, so um, at the beginning of each year, you know, bodybuilding.com always does transformation challenges. And it was three years ago-ish that Dimatize was the sponsor of it. And they kind of picked me as one of the athletes to go through that trainer. It was a lot of fun. Okay. Now what we're moving on to is inverse rows. A seriously underrated back exercise for just about anybody. So we're going to go uh, try with our feet elevated here. We'll see how that goes. We're gonna go 15 reps. We're just gonna pull ourselves up to the bars, body weight exercise, but it's uh, extremely effective and pretty challenging for just about anybody as well. Ah, 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 ah. So again, alternating chest and back exercises is how I typically like to do like a chest and back workout. What do you recommend for someone who starts working out for 30 to 60 days, then stops and starts again? I see results quick, but can't seem to stay on. How do you stay motivated? Okay, so somebody that starts working out, stops. Starts working out, stops. How do you stay motivated and consistent? I think it's understanding that, you know, you're not gonna be perfect all the time. And uh, I, I like to tell people, I'd rather have you be 80%, 100% of the time, then 100%, 50% of the time. Understand you're gonna miss days, that's okay. You're gonna screw up on your diet, that's okay. You gotta get right back into it. I've got two questions from YouTube. What's your take on carb cycle? And what is your height and weight for your show? What do you think you're gonna be 
So um, my take on carb cycling, I, I love it. I carb cycle all year round and I just adjust my carbs based off what I'm training. Um, higher intensity days get more carbs. And as far as height and weight for the show, I'm 5'11 and a half. Unless anything changes over the next week, that's probably what I'll be. Um, and as far as my weight, I anticipate I'll be like 203, 204 pounds on stage. Okay, set two. 15 reps. It's a little tough there. So, you know, if that's too challenging with your feet elevated, then you're just gonna put your feet on the ground. And that's probably what we're gonna end up having to do for our last two sets here. So alternating between chest and back. Next up for after we get done with these, let's take a look at what we've got on the agenda for after this. We're gonna go um, with a hammer press and a lat pull down. And we'll actually probably start supersetting some of these as well just to keep our heart rate up. And you can superset any of these and it can be a good way to get your workout done a little quicker, keep your heart rate up, maybe burn a few more calories as you're doing it. Do you have a coach and is there any benefit to having a coach uh, even if you don't? You know, I've got several people that I rely on as mentors, but I don't have a coach. Um, I don't have anybody that I like pay to write me out programs, but several people that I trust that I will ask for advice from. Okay, here we go. Set three, I'll get as many as I can with my feet up, and then I'll probably have to drop my feet down. Bring my feet down. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. Whew. Guys, it gets tough. It gets tough. You know, training when you're low on calories, when you're low on carbs, is, uh, is tough to do. And you give yourself every excuse in the book on why you should just bail out. But man, it pays off. I'll tell you guys that. It pays off to push through some of these hard workouts. Supplements for joint pain, try a type two collagen, a biocell collagen, um, glucosamine chondroitin. A lot of people have success with that too. Fortunately, I haven't had a bunch of issues with um, joint pain. So uh, first and foremost, I should say, just double up on your fish oil. That tends to be a good joint lubricant. My thoughts on L-citrulline is great. Um, like to do about eight grams before workouts, ideally. Okay, last set, best set, let's go. Ah. 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 Three, four, five, ah. 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 Eight. nine, uh, 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 uh. Given everything we have here, everything we have on these higher reps. So we're done with the inverse rows. Now we're gonna move on. Like I said, let's do lat pull down and hammer press and uh, we'll superset these just to kind of get it done a little, a little quicker and to kind of show you guys how you can use this as a superset. We'll head there now. So Rob wants to know, he wants to train, or he wants to trade some of his fat for muscle. Is that more diet or training? Um, definitely more diet, okay? Yes, you have to train hard, but that will never happen without diet. Um, so make sure that that's a huge focus for you, Rob. Okay, 
So we're gonna go dumbbells for a close grip hammer press, and then we'll superset it right here with a lat pull down um, to knock this guy out. Here we go. You gotta keep the weight still fairly light here. We're just focused on making sure we get 15 quality, quality reps in. Let's go. Put them together. Really work that inner chest. Right into the lat pull down here. We'll knock this guy out. And keep the weight at a reasonable amount here for good reps where we can really contract the lats. Whenever we do supersets, I'm gonna go three sets max. So rather than the four sets, we'll go three sets on supersets just because we are keeping our heart rate a little higher. Do you need to pull all the way down in order to get lat contraction? No, you do not need to pull all the way down to get lat contraction. Pull to about your nose. Stuart. Wants me to give Ash a shout out. And yes, Ash, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you being here, checking out Flex Friday with Trainer Mike. So I'll go through these two scoops of Amino Pro, about 28 ounces of water during a workout. All right, guys. Next set, 15. Woo, we're starting to get a pretty dang good pump here, guys. All right. It's the fun thing about chest and back workout too. Just gives you a good overall upper body pump. sets down we are feeling good chest is pumped back is pumped we are getting a good good depletion workout in here feeling good about this one so after the workout I'll show you guys what I do for my shake um, as well so make sure you stick around to see what I add into that twitch wants to know how essential are multivitamins here's the way I see it Multivitamins are so cheap. And um, the chances are you probably need some vitamins and minerals that you're not getting through food alone. So I'm gonna take a multivitamin every day, good quality multivitamin twice a day, just to make sure. I mean, at very worst guys, you're peeing out what you don't need. And, uh, but I would like to make sure I'm getting everything I can. Okay. Next set, last set. Remember, supersets, three sets max. Here we go. 
This is tough. This is tough, guys. But we're getting it done because we got goals. And we're gonna make it happen. along nicely for this workout. Now we'll move on to some flies. There's three pressing motions that we've got done. It's time to work on some flies. And we're gonna go, I have here a dumbbell fly with a straight arm pull down. Um, I'd like to try a cable fly instead today. And we'll superset that with a straight arm pull down here. Yes, always. Always listen to music when I work out. Um, I usually like finding a good house playlist on Spotify. Right now, what is it? Um, the Wobble, I think Wobble House 2018 is the one that I've been doing lately on Spotify. It's a good playlist. Bodybuilding.com does have a Spotify playlist and I like that occasionally. I don't like guys like, me personally, I don't like um, vulgar music, okay? I like to keep it clean and just upbeat. So I find just a lot of these playlists now have, they're just too vulgar, you know? And I, I, don't, I don't need to learn about, or I don't need to listen to, you know, how many uh, girls some guy's hooking up with through uh, a song, you know? I'd just rather keep it upbeat, keep the energy high. Need to gain six kilograms of muscle, um, creatine, absolutely. I recommend seven grams creatine monohydrate post-workout. Stay tuned, I'll show you exactly how I mix mine up and what creatine I use. 15 here on the chest flies. Really squeeze. Superset this with a straight arm pull down right here for 15 reps as well. Continuing on with our chest and back supersets. So we're gonna do two more sets here. And then I will show you guys how I mix up my post-workout shake. So I'll finish this up. We'll refuel on some water and show you guys what's up. Looks like somebody's trying to go shopping. What is your two favorite flavors of ISO 100? Two favorite flavors of ISO 100. I like um, chocolate, peanut butter, and peanut butter are my two current favorites. Um, right now, I'm actually using the all-natural. It's the stevia or stevia 
whichever party you follow, um, flavored protein. So I'm actually doing the natural vanilla right now, but um, that's just because so close to a show, I try and cut down a little bit on some of the other artificials. Okay, here we go, 15 reps. Chest flies. Big stretch. Uh, 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 Here we go. Straight on pull downs, really work this back. One more set, one more set to finish off this chest and back depletion workout. Can females take creatine? Females can and should take creatine. You know, you have to get away, get away with a little less, five grams following a workout of creatine monohydrate. It's usually good for a female. Maybe if I could get somebody to maybe rinse this out and fill it up with a little bit of water. I'll show you guys how I mix up. Oh, you, you rock. Maybe like 12 ounces of water in there. And I'll show you guys how I mix up my shake. What is a better split, one body part a day or two body parts a day? What's a better split, one body part a day or two body parts a day? Um, depends on what your goal is. I, most people don't need to just have one body part a day. Um, they'll get a lot of benefit from two to sometimes even three or four body parts per day. All right, last set. We're gonna call it good after this. Superset, chest flies, straight arm lat pull down, and then it's ISO 100 time. Here we go. Two, three, four, five. Oh, a big stretch, good contraction there, and onto here. Ah. Oh, so there it is guys that's going to do it for chest and back depletion workout now what i want to show you guys i'm always always getting questions about post-workout shakes and what do i do um, for that so i'm going to show you guys how i do a little bit of my post-workout here um, normally i like to go with like maybe like 12 ounces of water not the whole thing full I'm actually looking real quick to see if we can spill a little bit of this out because it's a little, a little too much. It's okay. So I like to go about 12 ounces of water for my shakes. Otherwise, it's just a little too much right after. It's 
So we'll go a little bit out of here. You know, you got to remember, I just did 28 ounces of water during the workout. You know, another 12 to 16 pre-workout. So you want to stay hydrated, but you have to split it out a little more than that typically. So you can blend your shakes if you have the ability to do that. I would always recommend it just because it adds a little more volume, which makes it a little easier for you. But so we're going to go about 12 ounces of uh, water here, cold water. Makes it awesome. And what the studies show is about 40 grams of whey protein immediately following a workout. So guys, I always do the Dimatize ISO 100. Normally I'll go with like a chocolate peanut butter or a peanut butter, maybe even mix in a little smooth banana. Um, because I'm a week out from a show, I'm going with the leanest protein that they have, which is the vanilla. The vanilla is always gonna be a little lower in calories just because it doesn't have the cocoa in it, which will add maybe a half a gram of fat. So we're going with the all natural. For, so for those folks who want a stevia sweetened rather than sucralose, um, we do offer to dimatize the vanilla and chocolate in all natural. So I'm gonna go a scoop and a half of this. Um, each scoop is gonna give me here 25 grams of protein. So I'm getting close to that 40 grams of protein mark there. Scoop and a half of the ISO 100 Give me close to the 40 grams of whey isolate. And then what else I'm always gonna mix in my post-workout shakes is some glutamine and some creatine. Your body absorbs things a lot better immediately following a workout. So I'm gonna go here with five grams of glutamine as well. So naturally whey protein has glutamine in it, but for those of you, especially if you're in a calorie deficit, I always recommend adding in more glutamine. I do 15 grams a day, five in the morning, five post-workout, and five before hitting the hay at night. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of creatine as well, okay? Um, even though I'm a week out from a show, I keep creatine in. A good quality creatine, like this dimatized monohydrate, is not gonna make you hold water in places you don't want to. It's just gonna help keep you full. Um, creatine, when you're using a good creatine, will help keep the muscles volumized with water, which is what we want because then it makes the muscles look full um, as well. So this is my shake. Now for my carbs, like I said right now, the only carbs I get are coming immediately pre and post workout. So we're gonna mix this up. Whoop. And we're gonna go with three lightly salted Quaker rice cakes, okay? These are seven grams of carbs a piece. So this is gonna be 21 grams of easy digesting carbohydrates here as well. And so very lean meal following my workout, but it's gonna give me what I need to recover. A lot of people get worried about losing their gains, losing their muscle when they diet. This is uh, some of the supplementing you can do to help make sure that you don't. If you guys like bars instead, try one of the ISO 100 bars or one of the elite bars. Like I said, right now they're buy one, get one 50% off. Um, if you prefer the shake, get the shake. Right now we get the special going on right now on the, the ISO 100 protein powder as well. So and get some of those extras too, the creatine, the glutamine, um, that stuff's super, super helpful. Um, try a couple different flavors of the ISO 100 and uh, see what works best for you guys. But that is going to be my post-workout shake and meal. And dang, that tastes good. All natural almond, or excuse me, vanilla is uh, freaking awesome. So there it is, guys, checking out. Appreciate you guys checking in for Flex Friday. One week out, we're going down with it. Next week, we'll try and find a way to keep you guys updated on the show, but that's it. Social, Social. yes, guys, check me out on tra Trainer Mike one on Instagram. I'll give you guys all the show updates on there. Trainer Mike one on Instagram, Facebook page, Trainer Mike Physique. Check me out on Body Space at Mr. Symmetry and uh, follow along there. So I'm tuning out, guys. Chest and back workout. That's a wrap. Boom!